All right, cheers. Um, thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, so this is the third Nomad Meetup we've had in London. And uh, we thought what would be really cool is to maybe get some of the people behind the whole kind of digital nomad movement uh, sort of streaming live over Hangout with us. Um, and uh, just to, you know, just to say a big thanks to George, who's, you know, been really, really helpful making this happen, giving us this venue access and everything. And uh, we're just going to let him sort of tell us a bit more about what's happening here. Um, you may know him. He runs Incubus London. Uh, he's, setting, he's doing some amazing things with the space here, so we'll just let George uh, take it away. Yes, that actually works. Well, this is going into just the Just show. So. <laughs> Looks more official. Um, hey, everyone. Thanks for coming down. Um, yeah, so I suppose Incubus that like John mentioned, um, maybe after a few too many uh, free beers that I said I can drink about, myself and my co-founder, we decided to uh, buy a bus. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe we had our midlife crisis early and we couldn't afford the Ferrari. Uh, so we bought a, a London double decker and we renovated it into a workspace. George, um, can you use the microphone? Yeah, does it work now? Oh, sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> and um, well, actually, we just parked around the corner. Um, but uh, I mean, I, I can't really call myself a digital nomad. I, I don't, I mean, I only recently understood what it actually means to be one. Um, but I suppose the bus, in a sense, is like a, a small part of me crying out, uh, my nomad self, trying to get around and hopefully spread entrepreneurship to you know, different parts of the country. Um, so the bus does move. I haven't taken outside the M25 yet. I don't trust myself behind the wheel, um, let alone on a motorway. Um, but um, yeah, so this space here, I guess, is uh, our next space. Um, it's a bit of an upgrade from a bus. But for digital nomads, what you want to do is offer free desks in this building. So you can come and you can work for free. Um, and in return, we just ask that you'll maybe give up a few hours a week to help a local startup on something they're struggling with. Whether that's a skill you can provide, maybe design, programming, I don't know. But we're going to have about 400 desks in the whole building. So there'll be plenty of room for everyone. So if you are interested and want to get involved, do come have a chat. But otherwise, really enjoy your night. And we've got of course, Cynic can drink about after this, which is going to be insane. So uh, look forward to uh, getting drunk with you then. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Cool. Thanks very much, George. So uh, we're going to go straight to our first uh, special guest for this evening. Um, so uh, we, we've had a few technical difficulties getting this all together, but hopefully it's all going to work seamlessly, right? <laughs> so, uh, first guest of this evening is uh, Peter Levels, uh, if, if you can bring him on, Louis. So, um, I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of you have heard of this guy, uh, so I think he's actually streaming from his phone, apparently, uh, <laughs> from Hong Kong. Uh, so, if, Peter, if you can hear us, can you uh, say hello? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Can Excellent. You yeah, awesome. can we... <laughs> Yeah, we, we're going to bring you up on the screen so we can all see you. We've got about, I don't know, how many people are we here? Yeah, 400. <laughs> yeah, about 50 or so people. So, um, is that, are you kind of going through the streets of Hong Kong there? Are you doing your sort of... Yeah, that, I'm doing my, my Periscope streaming over <laughs> Google Hangouts. Uh, yeah, I'm in Hong Kong right now, and um, I was just in a Starbucks, but it closed, so now I, I'm forced to uh, walk on the street with 4G and stream to you guys, but it's working, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> but thanks, everybody, for coming. It's really cool. Uh, we're doing these meetups, like, all over the world. Yeah. Um, I think we've had about, like, we've already had a previous London meetup, but we've had about, like, 35 now all over the world, like, Chiang Mai, Bangkok, to um, Hong Kong, even, to Berlin, to London. They're everywhere now, and it's really cool because um, one of the main problems with digital nomads is that many people that are traveling are... Uh, Isolated, they're traveling alone, which means that um, it gets really lonely on the roads. And it's a relatively new, so it's good to see other people do it as well. And, and that's why these meetups are good. Um, I guess some of the people here at the Nomad List Meetup in London are uh, nomads. A lot of them are not. They're interested in the movement and stuff, and it is to maybe do it you know, sometime as well. So I guess that's why it's good to you know, hear the stories from other people that are doing it and uh, how they can do it. Yeah, and that's why we're organizing these meetups. So this is like awesome, Jonathan, that you're doing this as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, actually, the first time I ever did one of these meetups was in Medellin, and it's fantastic because you managed to bring together a lot of sort of nomads who you sort of you sort of gang together. Yeah, I remember that. That was 
It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I saw the pictures. It would look really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, because it's a big hotspot for uh, for nomads. Yeah, and he managed to sort of get people together who all help out and volunteer in different sort of ways. So there's a girl, uh, Silver. I, I can't pronounce her proper name. But yeah, Sufan. Yeah. Yeah. So she she basically sets these meetups all sort of worldwide. You just give her a time and a place, and she does it. Yeah. 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 And the, the, the nomad listing helps to kind of um, make the meetups bigger because, like before in Chiang Mai, you had meetups with like 10, 20 people. Now it's like 100 average, I think. So it's it helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. So um, I'm going to kind of probably open the floor to questions if anyone has them. But yeah, um, yeah. maybe, I, I don't know, uh, can you maybe give like a bit of a backstory for people who, ha who aren't so familiar with, you know, where you came from and, yeah. and how yeah, you cool. got to where you are? Uh, so I, I started like two years ago in April of 2014. Uh, back then I had a YouTube channel for electronic music. It was actually German based, so people in London probably know German based very well because it comes from there. And uh, I made money from the advertising, so it was like a DJ mix channel with all the big drum and bass DJs on there. And uh, I was a drum and bass producer as well ages ago. Uh, I even DJed in London, but that's like 10 years ago. Anyway, th that was making money. And um, then I graduated with a master's degree, and, and all my friends graduated, and everybody started to get like a job. And I was working like at home in my house, and I was getting a little bit isolated because... You know, my friends wouldn't come over anymore in the day because they had, a, they had to have a job. And then what was left was we all got drunk like every weekend. Um, and I don't know, life just became a little different than in college. College life was really good for me, but then life became a little boring. And I was like, this is not what I want. So I thought, um, what if I just, uh, you know, try to fly to a, you know, a little cheaper place? Because Amsterdam was getting really expensive as well. My rent was like 1,200 euros. So uh, it was about... I think uh, a thousand pounds. Anyway, so I, so I booked a ticket to Bangkok and I flew there and um, I set up in a co-working space there. I started working from there and it was fine. I was saving money. I was having a, a better life quality. And um, I did that for like a year. Then I came back to Holland and then I didn't really want to uh, be in Holland anymore. I wanted to be around the world and, and just travel. And, and that's what I've been doing since then. Um, it's not all like rose colored. It's, it's also, it's, it's stressful. Like it's stressful to not have a house, not have a home. Um, it's not all like, oh, live on a beach and, and you know, have a great life. That's not at all. It's, uh, but it's a really interesting lifestyle. It's, it makes you, you know, meet a lot of different people, makes you see a lot of different cultures. Like here in Hong Kong, for example, it's really interesting to be here. Uh, so, yeah, if, if you're a little bit interested, if you're scared of it, just, just try it for a while. You can always go back. Um, for me, it's, it's done, you know, one, like miracles in terms of my productivity, in terms of my creativity, like inspiration from you know, the projects I do. I get different ideas when I'm here than when I'm in Amsterdam. And that helps me a lot. So I'd recommend for everybody just at least try it a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's quite quite sort of interesting. You talk about you know sort of getting inspiration and different ideas, um, and I, I you know I think a lot of people. So we're we're essentially doing sort of a joint meetup with Silicon Drink about, which is yeah. predominantly people from the startup scene from London. So yeah. do do you sort of like um and I th I think one of, one of the cool things is also that Drink about are expanding to all these different cities. And that's why it sort of ties in a little bit with the nomadic movement. Yeah, for uh, sure. I know you, you, you kind of have pretty strong feelings about sort of, um, you know, sort of startups and the whole sort of venture capital um, <laughs> culture and all that sort of thing. Yeah, can, yeah. Can, yeah. I, I think that's kind of like an interesting debate to have, you know, whether it's... Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of, like, I'm a super noob in startups as well, so I'm not an expert. I just think there's a lot of hype. Yeah. And it's a big, like, typical narrative of what people and companies should do. Just, you know, you have a, an idea and then you make a basic app. You go to investors and you get venture capital. And I think most stuff we do, like web developers, apps, we don't need venture capital, especially not in the beginning. And I think most of us should just stop being so distracted and just finish our stuff, launch an app, get users, and then um, build revenue. You know, build, like, 20K a month revenue, maybe 50K, and then get, to, get an investor. And maybe then you realize you don't even need an investor because they might be detrimental to your uh, roadmap or to your, you know, they, they influence your products, sometimes in a bad way. And uh, I'm a big fan of, of DHH, he's Daniel Heinemeyer Hansen, he, he did, uh, he invented Ruby, and he's also a big proponent of bootstrapping, and he makes, you know, 10 million a year uh, of revenue, and he's, he never got outside investment. So I think yeah. for a lot of stuff, venture capital is really good, but I think we're, what do you call it, like in English, uh, we stare at your belly button, uh, I don't know, uh, we're, uh, we're focusing a bit... <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's a Dutch verb as well. Uh, navel gazing at this uh, VC thing, and, and most of us don't really need it. And, and you, can, you can build a business where you make a lot more money than ha having a, a job. And 
why not, right? I mean, I know it's it's more romantic to get do the VC route, and maybe even in the future I would do it a little bit as well. But um, get revenue first because that that saves you the the problems of. You know, like let's say you raise five million dollars. It's not your money. You can't put it in your savings account. You have to spend it on your business. So that gives you some a few years to work for free, right? But that's it. Uh, you won't be rich. You know, you want to be rich. You know, make money, make your own money, and uh, that's my idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're uh, we're we're gonna try and keep a tight ship here. So I think if we if it's okay, we're gonna just ask if anyone has any questions. Raise some hands if you do. If not, we might actually uh, just go straight on to uh, Eugen Do. So, anyone, would you do you have any questions at the back there? Could you could you come this way and talk to the microphone? Um, and what's your name again? So we got Rog here. Uh, this is the first meetup you've been here. Yeah, excellent. So uh, yeah, go ahead. Here you go. So very insp very inspirational. Obviously, you know you guys are you know, out there doing your thing. Uh, I've been traveling for the last four years, like in Asia and and Europe and back and forth. Uh, I just want to ask you a quick question, but if you work outside of, of Europe, are yeah. you legally yeah. work there? Is there like a visa issue? Or yeah, is yeah. That so it's, it's, a, it's a big gray area. So uh, what you know with business drivers is that many business, most business drivers just travel for business and they are like incorporated in America or Europe. So nomads are kind of like the new business drivers. What that means is that most tourist visas, it's, um, it's not a, a big, very big problem to work uh, for short amounts of time. Um, it's very difficult to hire. That's like you, know, you really need to get started business in that country where you are. Um, but it's a legal gray area. But like if you look at Thailand, for example, they they uh, not publicly stated that they they're not gonna you know, care about nomads. They're not gonna uh, sanction them or something. They like that they're coming there. They like that they're spending money. And I think countries should be more you know open like that. That they that they see like okay, these are people spending money. They're helping locals as well learn more about tech. So. Uh, I think it's a good thing, but it's definitely legal gray area. But um, honestly, I don't see that as a problem. Like, I don't know anybody who's been prosecuted for it. It would be stupid for any country to prosecute because it's the future of work. So, you know, right? Excellent, excellent. Is, yeah, we have another person over here. What's your name? Sorry. Brian. Brian's going to come and ask a question. Uh, just building up on a little bit um, and going back to your VC point, so we're actually going through a raise and they, they won't give us any money anyway unless we've made money, so you're absolutely right. Um, but we're in a, a different kind of world. But the question that I've got in particular is, do you find in this early stage of the um, kind of the, the digital nomad world where you can set up virtual teams around? You mentioned about um, you know, hiring uh, staff in a certain uh, country, but... You know, have you made those kind of contacts that you could make a virtual team up um, anywhere on the planet? Thank you. Um, yeah, I have some people working for me, like mostly contractors. They help me out with Nomad List, uh, and um, I know loads of people who have virtual teams. And the thing is, it's it's it's. I don't know if this is relevant, but it feels way more uh, obvious. Like you, you're probably you you make an app or you make a startup or whatever, and then it slowly takes off, and then you're like, okay, I need some help with this. So you find some some friend of yours, and you find some uh, um, some person on Odesk or whatever, and they help you out. It's it, it's not so much like, okay, I'm gonna hire you, I'm gonna give you dental insurance, all that shit. It's more like contracting, and then you can always go into a, like a full time employee situation later. Um, I, I think remote working and doing a virtual team, remote, it's it's almost better than working in an office for me because. It makes everybody really responsible for their own uh, work and discipline, and it makes communication easier. I think text is way easier communication in real life. Real life is very subjective. Um, it's you know when I'm with a person in real life, I always just want to go giggle and drink coffee and like laugh about everything. When I'm on text, I'm like you know it's like do this, do that, and okay, cool. So for me, it's 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 a very big improvement. Um, I think it, 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 I think it's totally possible. I think a lot of remote workers are more actually more uh, productive than um, in an office so excellent cool I think uh, we'll probably move on to the next person we got to go, because we've got to get through quite a few people here yes yeah, sure. th thanks so much uh, Peter like you're you're an inspiration to a lot of people and uh, yeah, dude, thanks for organizing this man and, and thanks everybody here for coming it's uh, awesome so. yeah and we we look forward to seeing you in uh, in Berlin in August uh, but I'll yeah, let for sure I'll let uh, Marcus and Feli tell us more about that that later yeah. cool Okay. See you guys. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent.
So uh, next up, we've got. Um, oh, hey, <laughs> hello world. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, Yoo Jin Do, uh, who's uh, from South Korea and is currently in Bali, I believe. Uh, so Yoo Jin has been uh, basically putting together a documentary about the whole sort of digital nomad movement. Uh, we were going to have the trailer on loop on the things you walk up. We, we might do that later, or we might play it to you at the end. Uh, but it'd be great to uh, bring Eugen on, if we can do that. And uh, she'll tell us a bit more about what she's been doing and how she's crowdfunded her documentary as well. So hi, Eugen. Hey, Eugen, I think you're... Oh, we've got you muted. Hold on a sec. Uh, top in the middle? No, that's us. That's us. <laughs> No, she, she needs to press the button, I think, on her screen, the microphone button. She's muted. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. You did put the button. Can you hear me? Microphone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, hold on a sec. Oh, uh, Eugene, can you unmute yourself, I think? That's what she needs to do, right? Yeah. Okay, here Hello. we go. Hello. Yes, we can hear you now. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Davey. Hey, everyone. Hey. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent. Great to have you on. Uh, so, could you tell us, you know, about your your documentary for people who don't know anything about what you're up to and and how you managed to crowdfund it, which I think is a really interesting story in uh, itself. Yeah, for sure. So, I'm making a documentary about Digital Nomad and One Way Ticket, and then. Uh, I started make, uh, I started like making my own platform to do the crowdfunding because I could have done with that I could have, I could have done with the starter but the thing is if you go to the film category actually the success rate is only like 60 percent less less than 60 percent and half of them they can't get even any like single dollar so most of them they are like already professional they have their own filming staff they have their own filming studio which is I'm not, so I just I just thought, okay, then I'm gonna make my own platform, and then I made it, and it took like for me to like one month for coding my the my first website because I didn't want to use framework, so I like I wrote each code like HTML, I use HTML and CSS and some JavaScript. It took one month for me, and then after that, I started. Uh, I kicked off crowdfunding uh, that was fe last February, and then like for the first month I could have raised like ten thousand dollars, and it was totally like really really awesome for me. It, I mean, it means really really a lot for me. And then it wasn't that easy because there were a lot of problem problem when I when I tried to integrate all the like payments system like such as PayPal, Stripe, and Bitcoin. At the first like four two or three days. Stripe didn't work at all, and I didn't know about that. So for the like for the first three days, three or four days, two or three four days, I was like, why everyone only donated with PayPal? Why no one used their credit card? Why? And it turns out there was my <laughs> Stripe integration totally, was totally broken. So yeah, it it wasn't hard. It it, it it wasn't not that easy, but it really worked to do that. Yeah. So. Because of I crowdfunding with my own platform, so because of that, a lot of people like started like paying attention. And then, yeah, it's just so amazing. So now I'm in Bali, and I got all my equipment with the, all the like donations. And yeah. then I started filming in Bali, and then I met a lot of people already like within a month. And yeah. then my next destination is Southeast Asia, some country in Southeast Asia such as Thailand, uh, Vietnam, and Singapore. And after that, I'm gonna head to Europe. But definitely, I'm gonna be in DNX Global for sure, in Berlin, the first of August. And then after that, I'm gonna film the buffers their team retreat in ice uh, startup uh, offsite meeting in Iceland. And also, I'm gonna film the Estonian government because they're gonna give me a comment uh, about their e-residency system, which is. Estonian government, they just started e-residency system so that people can register their business uh, in Estonia without any physical moving into uh, Estonia. So everyone can open their bank account on online, which is totally simple. So this is like really, really interesting 
attempt of current system. Right. They try to adapt like older, like new generation, right? It's really something worth to, worth to talk about it. So after yeah. that, I'm going to head to South America. And yeah, it's everything just going <laughs> so crazy. And I'm so excited about yeah. it. Yeah, it sounds, sounds uh, like you've got a pretty busy time ahead of you. So yeah. kind of going back, so you, you basically built essentially a crowdfunding platform uh, yourself. And yep. you did this from a non-coding background, is that right? Like before, so before you were doing this, like had you done any coding before or was this quite... Not really. I mean, my whole career, my entire career is like journalist. Uh, I used to work for several tech media companies in South Korea. That's it. Interviewing people, okay. writing articles, that's it. And it was really hard. Even my own blog, I just bought a WordPress theme like for $10 and then that's it. <laughs> okay. And so, so I, I, I think that's excited. It's my first baby. Yeah, so I, I think that's quite impressive. Like, um, how how did you keep yourself motivated to you know and uh, to to sort of self learn and and did, were there any sort of shortcuts that you used or like any you know for someone maybe who wants to you know learn how to build their own MVP or you know or, or platform or whatever and goes from a, a very sort of non technical background? Do you have like any sort of like what was your secret sauce, basically? Oh God. Uh... Okay, what the secret source? So in my case, um, because I, in my case, it's, that was only one possible way I can kick out this project. Because if I work for my previous employer for like at least like two or three months more, I actually I don't I didn't have to crowdfunding. I just could get my like I could have uh, I could have got all the equipment with my money. But it's the time I have to study right now because this year is totally interesting. Too many interesting stuff related to digital nomads keep happening. So I really didn't want to miss that right time. So I was like, okay, if I do the campaign in, on Kickstarter right now, it's going to be totally, for sure, it's going to be like all failed. It's almost obvious. So I was thinking about what should I do? And then Actually, I wanted to. I was thinking about using framework like Bootstrap, but I just thought maybe this would be a. Re I can use this opportunity as a really, really good chance to learn how to code like A to G by myself. And then it turns out it wasn't that easy. I, I, it wasn't that hard. I mean, really, just I studied like code academy. Uh, I just studied like visiting code academy, and then I started like asking or asking around like to all the people around me, and then. So yeah, I my secret source. I was I kept bugging all the people around me who can code, and that was such a big help. Excellent, excellent, cool. I'm gonna open the floor again. Uh, if anyone has more questions, raise your hands, or we can go. I mean, we could. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she built it herself. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, um, Eugene, we're going to uh, definitely play your trailer later on, so people can see, you know, your work, and uh, we really look forward to um, to uh, seeing the real thing, actually. Awesome. Um, thank you. Yeah, there's a question here. Can you tell us when the movie is coming out? Like when it will be? Yeah. And where so can we find it? Yeah. I'm. Um, I hope. I can oh, sorry. Over we've got here. you muted again. Hello. Can you hear me right now? Something wrong with our hangout. Hello? Yeah. Hello? There's something wrong with our sound. Sorry, Eugene. Hold on a second. Hello? 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 <laughs> yeah. Should we, Hello? Can we, can we leave the Hangout and go back in? Can we try that? Try again. Sorry about this, Eugene. We'll be back with you in a second. I would just refresh. I would just refresh the. Yeah. Sorry, guys. We're going to be back with you in a second. Just refresh.
Can you try uh, playing something else? Yeah. I think, you know, what, why don't we just, we, let's just move on to Will, and we can figure out. But we're just going to have Will present in person, so. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think we're ready for you, Will. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, next up we've got, um, uh, we've got Will Hatton. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, or actually, we, we, we can just turn up the volume and we can, yeah. on the like side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Eugene. We're having some troubles with the sound here, but um, we'll uh, definitely, you know, keep in touch and look forward to when your film comes out. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right. And now we're moving out to, over to Will. Uh, Will's a travel blogger. Uh, guys, can I get your attention? Sorry. Uh, so yeah, Will's going to tell us a bit about his uh, adventure travels and how he's basically a digital nomad without too much of the digital and the tech side of things. So uh, over to Will. Yeah, uh, like John says, I'm pretty much a tech newbie. Uh, I was traveling for like seven years and I saw one of you guys on the laptops working away and I was like, I can't look like fun. Uh, I spoke to some of you in cafes, everyone told me about earnings, which I thought was pretty impressive because I was like, you know, doing like five dollars a day. You know, it was kind of fun, but uh, it had its, its drawbacks. Do I have any slides? You do, they're coming. Right, Louis? <laughs> so, anyway, right, yes, my name is Will Hatton, and I run a adventure travel blog called Project Backpacker. It's basically about traveling around the world without much money. Um, I specialize in going to dangerous places, specifically because nobody else goes there, which means that I have no competition, which means <laughs> that my writing is the best writing out. <laughs> so, um, Ah, there we go, right. So, I had a brief crack at travel writing when I first rode an ostrich, which was about five years ago in Vietnam. And I popped the photo on Facebook, and as you might expect, it got a bit of a uh, viral reaction because nobody even realised there were ostriches in Vietnam, let alone you could put a sand on one and try and ride it, which you can. So, um, my very first bit of travel writing ever was a group Facebook message to some friends uh, written from an iPhone. It was probably the worst thing I've ever written. But it did get quite a good reaction, so I thought, you know, maybe I'll pop that in the bank and have another look at it a little bit later on. So, right, well, never mind. So, for the next five years, I was basically traveling around the world. I lived in India for a year. Uh, I went to Nepal. I was in Burma. I was in Burma during the Saffron Revolution, which you guys might remember was when the monks were going a bit crazy and the government was kind of cracking down. It was a pretty good time to be there from a writing point of view, but I wasn't writing yet. Uh, I was in Palestine. I worked on a farm in Palestine, which is pretty cool. Then hitchhiked all the way into Jordan and lived in a cave with a Rastafarian Bedouin. His name was Kassab. He had a bright pink Land Rover. He was blazed the entire time when I helped him herd his goats. Pretty good fun. Um, so yeah, I was trying for about five years. Um, and two years ago, I thought, you know what, I'm really, really sick running out of money, going home and working like 60 hours a week in supermarkets stacking shelves. I have got a science degree, by the way, but I've never used it. Um, so yeah, I thought, you know, there must be a better way to do this. So I started a website, and it was an absolute disaster. It was terrible. Like, I should, I should have bought some screenshots, but I don't have them. It was so... That's actually because I don't have to take a screenshot. It was so, so bad. I mean, there was about 100 pages on there, but you couldn't find them. None of the menus worked, none of the widgets worked. I've been told I should get onto like Amazon affiliate programs. No idea how to do that. Like, absolutely no idea whatsoever. So, you know, I sort of started writing, and the writing itself got a good reaction. And I started putting it into travel competitions. I started winning. So I was like, all right, well, at least I can kind of write. So we'll roll with that. And nine months ago, I decided, okay, by Christmas 2015, I want to be one of the best known travel bloggers in the world. And it's happening. So you saw me first. Um, so as I said, I'm not really a tech whiz, so nine months ago what I did was I decided I was going to invest my very small amount of money into outsourcing and I hired a web designer who was there and she's brilliant, put up your hand, and if anybody ever needs a web designer she's really, really cheap, especially if you give her a couple of years. So 
with the help of my web designer, we built the site from the ground up, and it's now got about 250 pages. Everything is organized really, really well. I'm making money from ad revenue. I'm making money from lots of posts. I'm making more money than I've ever had, so I'm making more than I can spend. I mean, that's partly because I go to really, really cheap countries, but it is nice. I feel temporarily rich, which is fantastic. Incidentally, think about your branding. The broke backpacker should have done something else. Anyway. Um, So, as I said, I kind of knew my strengths, I kind of knew my weaknesses, and my strengths were that I'm good at writing, and that, that was it. That, that is my strength. I'm good at writing, I'm not good at much else. I'm alright at talking sometimes, I can do a lot of bullshit, so we can do this all night if you want. Um, I don't know how much you guys know about the blogging industry, or specifically travel blogging, but it is extremely competitive. Like, there are a lot of people doing it. I mean, if you type in Thailand travel blog, you're probably going to find me, like, on page 50. I will be there somewhere. If you type in Venezuela travel blog, I'll be right at the top because no one else goes. But it's the murder capital of the world. <laughs> it is, however, a beautiful country with somewhat standoffish people and very cheap rum. So my sort of whole uh, my sort of whole aim is to go to dangerous countries where nobody else wants to go and to try and travel on extreme budgets, keep people interested. Even though I am now actually earning a fair bit of money, I don't use it. Put it all to one side. My budget is always under twenty dollars a day. So you know. Still hitchhike, still sleep rough, still camp, still do a bit of dumpster diving every now and again, although it's not particularly glamorous, I recommend it. Um, so when it came to trying to stand out amongst the child bloggers, I figured, okay, there's, there's a few things I can do here. Um, and kind of like 50 years ago, if you were starting a company, you might spend 50% of your budget on a brand new BMW so you look successful. I was like, okay, no worries, I'm just going to look successful. And that's what I did. Um, I worked out how to hack social media, give my stats. Uh, I went from 3,000 Twitter followers to just under 30,000 in three months. I got 2,500 Instagram followers in one month, and I got 8,000 Facebook likes on my main page in eight months, which is really, really good for a child blogger. Like, if you look at our people in the same sort of range as me, I've grown a lot faster. And there are ways to hack pretty much any kind of social media. I'm more than happy to tell you about them, but it would take forever because I get really excited. So find me a bit afterwards, and I'll tell you how to do it if you're interested. Uh, secondly was to know your demographic. So my demographic is basically people who kind of want to go to Venezuela, kind of want to go to Palestine, kind of want to go to Burma, but their parents won't let them. <laughs> so <laughs> I, you know, I go to dangerous places. I kind of on purpose try and get in a bit of trouble, like try and go and find you know, people who will talk to me about what's going on economically. Like in Venezuela, for example, it's got some of the worst inflation in the world. Recently wrote about that. It's been picked up by a newspaper who are republishing it. So that's going really, really well. Um, so every single penny that I have earned, to be honest, I've kind of just invested in marketing, buying t-shirts, business cards, stickers, but loads to hand out, um, and sort of talking to other bloggers. I mean, if, if you are a blogger, I don't know how many of you are, is anybody a blogger? Yes. <laughs> so um, if you are a blogger, it's pretty much all about making friends about Bloggers, like I'm on first name terms about 50 other bloggers, and when someone gets a good contact, you want to be the person they think of. You, you, want, you want to think, hey, Will, he's a friendly guy, he helped me out, he gave me a contact two weeks ago, I'm going to pass this on to him. And I'm constantly getting emails from our bloggers being like, okay, I've got the uh, email address of the editor of the Daily Mail, exactly what I want, or the email address of the editor of the National Geographic. Yeah, I'll have that, that sounds brilliant. So, you know, it's all about collaboration. If you learn something and it works, like my social media hacking techniques, don't keep it to yourself. There's absolutely no point in doing it. I'm not saying you should write an ebook on it and share it with the whole world, but share it with people who are in your, in your sphere, people who can help you out. And to that end, I've taken sort of under my wing quite a lot of very, very new bloggers, people who are like very new to the game, don't know what they're doing, done a bit of mentoring over Facebook, email, and Skype. I'm kind of thinking of charging for this in the future, but at the moment I'm just doing it for free with the hope that if one of them does well, they'll kind of remember me. So <laughs> it's kind of all about learning and then sharing. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the life. I have so many cool photos to show you. Don't worry about it, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, try it. Try it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey! So that's the Rayma, which is the uh, highest tabletop mountain in the world in Venezuela. I had them all kind of laid out in a certain way. This is Volcano Gordy, highly recommend it. Oh, yeah, so, uh, 
invest in your equipment, people. GoPro, best thing I ever bought from a travel blogger <laughs> point of view. Seriously, uh, I have one stolen. Actually, was able to uh, raise the funds to replace it by Indiegogo. But that's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got that. But we're getting, we're getting to the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We actually, we should have it at the end. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> basically, in the sand glass islands, sort of like tropical beaches, absolutely beautiful. One weird thing about travel blogging is I suddenly have to get used to like having a face because I've never really taken pictures of myself, which is quite weird to suddenly have to start getting people like, okay, take a picture of this in my travel blog. So that, that was a little bit weird. Uh, it was a bit of an adjustment. So, you know, not bad looking, but yeah. Um, oh, it, that was hard. That, that was fun. Uh, okay, right, so I kind of discovered pretty early on that my demographic liked headstands. So I started doing headstands. Um, I also like the odd bit of nudity. This is kind of about standing out, like I said. Um, I used to be hitchhiking in, uh, in Guatemala. Ah, oh, right, this is in Venezuela, right? This is $100, and this is how much money you get for $100. It's one of the most dangerous countries in the world. It's got uh, the worst inflation in the world. The, the uh, black market exchange rate is 35 times better than the official exchange rate, which means if you go to a dollar, you can live like a millionaire. It is absolutely amazing. I recommend it. Carry a machete for protection. <laughs> um, yeah, so with my writing style, I try to write about like what I'm feeling, because who cares about what I'm feeling? I try and write about what I'm seeing or the people I'm in. So I do a lot of interviews. I do a lot of sort of interviews or like a story told from the point of view of somebody else, because I think that's a lot more interesting than being like, I mean, who cares what I'm thinking? I'm, I'm just asking to record it, you know. Uh, this is me working on the largest hammock in the world, made of telephone wires, extremely uncomfortable, wouldn't recommend it. I was going to talk to you guys a little bit about what it is like being travel blogger. A lot of people say, oh, you've got the best job in the world. And I'm like, well, yeah. I'm my own boss. So it can, it can be a very profitable job, but if I'm lazy, I don't earn anything at all. So if I go on an eight-day trek, and I've got no Wi-Fi, and I'll come back, it's going, to, it's going to take me a minimum of two days just to get back to where I was, let alone start writing about the trek. So that is definitely one of the drawbacks of being a travel blogger. Like, you spend a lot of time playing catch-up. Oh yeah, the video, right, okay. Wow, the video loads. So pretty much the, the biggest lesson that I've learned, I've only been properly trying to travel blog for nine months. I've been earning money for three months. It took six months to earn money. I'm really pleased with how it's going. I think if you are going to start a blog, I can only speak to travel blogging, but if you are going to start a blog, I think you've got to be prepared to like work really hard and earn nothing for six months. But I think after six months, it will start rolling in, as long as you network properly. The, the biggest lesson that I've learned is network, so assign people a value in a really mathematical, harsh, almost German way. Sorry for any Germans. Um, and, and then, you know, make use of that. Give back to people, learn, share, etc., etc. Any questions? Go for it. Uh, I'm going to the Philippines in six days. Now, I'm not normally in the UK. I came back because my mum's birthday, and um, I've successfully managed to miss every single one for the last five years. So. Um, <laughs> I promise I'll come back, but I'm off to the Philippines in six days. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my one, sorry? Your accent. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so I am British, but um, it's got a bit of a South African, Australian swang going on. Like, you wait till later when I'm drunk. You wait. It gets, it gets pretty intense. Yeah, I've got no logical answer for it, sorry. <laughs> when we first get that. It was our first kidnapped. Um, I haven't been taught. I mean, I've had, I've, I've been stripped naked with a gun in my face, but I haven't been <laughs> properly kidnapped yet. Um, I've had a knife pulled on me a couple of times. I've not been, I've not actually been made to go anywhere yet. Um, well, that was crossing back into Israel from Palestine. I don't like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> For men, women, or general? Uh, can you do both? Yeah, I can do both. All right. For men, always carry a knife and how to use it. For women, um, if you're going to hitchhike, do it. Like by all means, but be confident and try and get a travel buddy if you can. Actually, to be honest with you, the best. The best travel safety I can get you is to try and have a travel buddy, especially if you're going somewhere dangerous. If you're going trekking, which I do a lot of, if you're going without a guide, 
four is the number you want. That way, if somebody gets injured, one person can stay with them and two can go for help. Do not go trekking as a pet. Um, I nearly died in the pool. It was like really, really bad. So, four. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right. Just ignore my sort of beginning 30 seconds. It's a bit boring, but it does speed up a little bit. Can we skip the first? Oh, yeah. Go. Yeah. No sound. You need sound, you're not going to get the full effect. This is in Guatemala, by the way. How many countries have you been? Uh, if you pull out the um, of the forces. Listen really carefully. Oh, really? Nice. I've used several because I can't use them anymore because I already played them. That's not the best quality filming I've ever done. You kind of get the idea that it's pretty fast. This is Cerro Negro, just out Leon, Nicaragua. I guess the main main sort of message I want to give you guys: if you're not if you're not a techie, don't worry about it because. If you want to make it work, you can make it work. So, yeah, that's it, really. That was awesome. <laughs> um, so, next up, hopefully we can get um, Marcus and Feli from Berlin. Uh, so, they're organizing a conference there. If we can get them, is that possible? Like... It, we can do it without the sounds on the speakers, but hello. If we can get them. <laughs> Hi. Do you hear us? Well, yeah, we can hear you. We can't see you though. Can we get <laughs> on the okay. We we'll work on it. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, I was just about to tell the guys. So, um, Marcus and Feli are everyone you've seen tonight. Levels, Eugene Doe. Uh, and Will and me and a couple of other people here are all going to. Connection is not 100 ne? You have implants. Uh, what we can expect. Um, so yeah, do you want? You still there? So yeah. It's a little bit yeah. Can sad. you hear me? <laughs> but can I you think... dismiss all of that. No, yeah, I think you just introduced us and asked us for talk a little bit about the Linux global, about the background, about our yeah. background, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, cool. Right. Um, yeah, so we are Max and Philly from Germany. Our home base is Berlin. Right now we are in Berlin, back again after traveling in South America, where we also met uh, you, Jonathan, and also Will um, in Colombia. And we are the founder of the first conference for Digital Nomads, which took place last year in May for the first time for German-speaking people. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> and yeah, out of, out, out of this uh, success of the first Digital Nomad conference, we did a second one. Now we are doing a third one in four weeks for the German people. But I think what's for, more interesting for you people, guys, is that we are also planning, or we are doing the first international um, Digital Nomad conference at DNX Global on the 1st of August. Awesome, awesome. And am I right in saying it goes over two days, over 30? Ooh, we didn't hear, we, we don't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yes. yeah, we didn't get it okay, all. Good. 
two days, is that correct? 31st of July or 1st of August? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. It's two days, the first day, the 31st of July, we will do workshops on um, topics that people ask us to do, like find your passion, how to get started, yeah. how to make your first, um, your first bucks on the road, how to be productive on the road, how to stay focused. Um, that are all topics we will cover in the workshops. And on the second day, the Saturday, there will be the main event with inspiring talks, motivating talks, but also hands-on hands -on talks and travel-related talks like hotspots for digital nomads. And we will have um, people like Peter Levels um, on the stage, but also Derek Sievers from the United States, or Natalie Sisson, the suitcase entrepreneur from New Zealand, uh, Mark Manchin, a very famous writer. So it's a huge, it's a big program and lineup, and, and we are really looking forward to it. We also have different um, kinds of businesses, so it's not just tech related, but we have also some tech people there, like Noel Chok, um, who is presenting uh, some technical stuff, but also uh, um, Sabrina Ilnova, she's a travel, a very well-known travel blogger, international one also. Um, so we want to cover as many topics as possible, how to um, um, how to start your business and um, yeah. Excellent. Have you have, have you got? The big superstars like you know Chris Gillibo and all that kind of thing, or are you trying to keep it sort of grassroots level, or what's what what's the vision for the future? Oh, we don't um, hear you. Didn't get it completely. I just. Um, got Chris Gable and what our vision for the future is, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. So I was just wondering what sort of future plans, like maybe five years down the line. Uh, yeah, I just answered what I understood. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what we want to do is to make the DNX global, like uh, was the worldwide, the uh, biggest conference for digital nomads. So we want to move to other places as well, like maybe Barcelona to Asia. The first one will be in Berlin, the first international one. But the um, next, uh, we want to do it like every year. It's a it's a great plat platform that uh, the people can meet and connect, and then it should move. And what also Peter Levels mentioned before, it's very important to surround yourself with like-minded people, especially in this lifestyle, especially in old-fashioned uh, cultures like in Germany, um, probably also in the rest of Europe where you've got lots of people talking to you, why, why do you stuck out of the system, so you have to be, you have to be very um, strong with your mindset and you, you need to know what, what you really want and this is what helps you there is um, to surround yourself and gather with like-minded people to to make uh, to to start some mastermind groups or to find a goal buddy, uh, to find brothers in crime to to go on on this yeah. lifestyle. Because it's not always easy. We are very transparent and we try to be very authentic. There are many challenges on the road, especially at the beginning, but it's it's absolutely feasible and it's doable. And and there are more and more uh, proven examples that that you can do it. Absolutely, and I, I suppose that's one of the advantages of going to the conference is you meet those like-minded people and you can kind of team up with others that... Yes, but we will also want to do like a know-how transfer so people who have a business already or just started that they can take their business to the next level. Now we lost you again. Yeah. It's always a little bit stuck. Oh, yeah. So, so anyway, I, I will just <laughs> go on then, because uh, what I wanted to mention, especially for you people in, in London, um, there's a very good connection between London and Berlin with EasyJet for under 50 pounds, I think, <laughs> and we got we got already many signups from from people from the UK. So uh, I think there's also a big demand for, for this lifestyle uh, or to get more infos about the lifestyle, to get more inspiration, to get more, more details. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the chance yeah. to meet other people in person. Yeah, right now we have uh, over 200 sign-ups from 16 countries, so it will be very international. And Berlin in summer is, is really cool. So if you really want to know more and connect to other people, 
you should come to the DNX Global. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I, we have uh, we. We don't hear you. Off. Yeah, can mm -hmm. you hear me now? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, a bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, like, uh, we you, you we have like a special special promo code with ten percent mm -hmm. off. I yeah. think, uh, yeah. <laughs> Say, uh, just leave it there, I guess. <laughs> this is where we say goodbye. And, uh, well, you know. Um, I just got goodbye. <laughs> <on. laughs> Maybe. May, so, you familiar with uh, so look and drink about? I don't think I really need to. Uh, That's cool. Oh, yeah, so uh, let's carry on. Let's. Uh, yeah, well, here and the and the next, yeah, yeah, and we might try and get that trailer on the video projector over there as well. Okay, we say goodbye. Cool, thanks, guys. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, bye bye. <laughs> next time.